Dariel is a magicless loser whose dad went to get milk but never came back so he was raised in the demon army but one day the new demon general kicks him out so he is forced to stay in a human village where he saves a girl and ends up unlocking his SS rank abilities to become strongest human alive. Our story starts with Dariel who is a 34-year-old soldier and has been loyally serving the Demon King's army ever since he was taken in as an abandoned baby and raised by one of the four great demon generals, Grand Baza. Despite his long time of faithful service, he is stuck at the lowest of the low ranks in the army because he lacks the ability to use any magic. From the beginning of time, demons and humans have always fought wars against each other. The only difference between the two is that demons can wield magic, and humans can't. Not having any magical powers, Dariel has been looked down upon by the other generals as a disgrace from the beginning. After his guardian, Granbaza, retired, his son, Bashbaza assumed his position. On the very first day as one of the four demon generals, Bashbaza fires Dariel from his position and kicks him out of the palace. With no home to go back to, Dariel wanders around aimlessly in the woods for days, with little food to eat and very little sleep, in hopes of starting a new life. One morning, he stumbles upon a human woman who is being chased by a monkey monster. His natural instinct as a soldier makes him defend the woman from its attack. With zero magical skills to use, he tries to use his brute strength to hold the monster off, but he falls to the ground mid-charge due to his weakened and starved body. The monster punches him, sending him flying across. Dariel notices a dagger in the woman's fallen back, even though it is considered a taboo for a demon king army soldier to use a human weapon. He grabs it and stabs the monster in its chest copying the moves of a human hero he had seen before. Seeing the monster that attacked her killed, the woman thanks Daryl for saving her life. He tries to make his leave, but she grabs onto the back of his cloak and refuses to let go until he agrees to come back to her village. She wishes to thank him properly by inviting him home and serving him a meal. Tempted by the offer of a good, hot meal, Dariel agrees to go with her. Once they reach her home at Lux Village, she introduces herself as Malika. He even meets her mother and father, Envol, the village's mayor. He decides to be very cautious around them because they will attack him if they discover he is a demon. He explains that he was wandering in the forest because his former employer's son had taken over the business and fired him, forcing him to immediately leave the lodgings provided by the company. Grateful for saving her life, Malika and her parents insist on him staying in their house. Knowing he has nowhere else to go and no one else to care about him, he accepts their offer. The next day, Dariel and Malika's father discuss jobs over coffee. As the village's guild master, Envil suggests Dariel register with the guild and become an adventurer, whose job is to complete quests requested by the locals ranging from collecting herbs to defeating monsters. He believes he is perfect for the job considering his physique. He gives him the guild registration form, making Daryl panic because only a human can successfully complete the ritual in the form. If he tries, he'll fail and reveal he is a demon. He tries to make excuses and run away, but Malika decides to help him out by forcefully poking his finger and putting a drop of his blood on the form. To Dariel's complete shock, he successfully performs the ritual and gets registered in the guild. He discovers that he was a human all along and was merely brought up by the demon Granbaza and demon society. The next day, Invil gives him the first lecture about being an adventurer. He first teaches him about aura. It is something that all humans are born with, which they can use by infusing it into their weapons to fight. The best choice of weapon for an adventurer depends on their aura, which can be of four types, slash, sting, protect, and hit. Dariel picks up a sword first, which will test his slash ability. Invil gives him a large tree stump to slash across, saying slashing even halfway through is a good indicator of being the slash type. Despite not knowing how to use a sword, Dariel infuses his aura into it and makes a large slashing motion. The stump is cleanly cut all the way across, astonishing both Malika and her father. Next, he aims at an apple with a simple bow and arrow to test his sting ability. He hits the apple with tremendous force, causing it to fly back and raise a dust storm. After that, he is made to hit a boulder with a hammer, causing it to crumble into pieces. Finally, he has to block an attack from Invil using a giant iron hammer with a small wooden shield to test his protect ability. Despite his strongest attack, Dariel successfully blocks it and sends him on his back. These results prove that Dariel has a perfect aura for all four types, something Invil has never heard of. Invil advises him to apply to the Central Guild, the top organization for any aspiring adventurer. 
His abilities are more than enough to get him in, and he will also write him a letter of recommendation. However, Dariel sees Malika's tears and asks to remain in the village. Shortly after, Invil introduces Dariel as a new adventurer to the villagers. Everybody happily welcomes him except for one green-haired teen guy who shames Dariel for being an old geezer. The teen is Geshida, the village's only current adventurer. Geshida asks him what his rank is. When Dariel reveals his E rank, Geshida makes fun of him and flexes his D rank, telling him not to get in his way. Invil apologizes for Geshida's cocky behavior and gives him his first assignment, collecting a bunch of medicinal herbs to complete a pile of requests that Geshida refuses to do. Dariel accepts. Invil warns him to be careful while looking for these herbs as there have been multiple sightings of a monster in the surrounding woods. Geshida accepted the assignment to hunt it six months ago but has been unsuccessful so far. When he shows Dariel the picture, Dariel and Malika realize that the monster is the same one that he killed and saved Malika from. With that, Dariel completed his first guild assignment without even knowing it. The next day, Geshida and Dariel go over quests with the guild master. The guild master makes Geshida thank Dariel for defeating the monkey monster for him. Embarrassed and frustrated for being upstaged by an E-rank adventurer, Geshida grabs a quest from the master's desk, despite his protests, and runs off to complete it. Dariel sets off into the woods with Malika by his side to show him around and guide him. He notices she seems very comfortable moving around in the forest, walking past thorny bushes and climbing up short cliffs. She shares that she also always wanted to be an adventurer. She was in the woods the day Dariel saved her because an old woman in the village was sick with a bad cold, but Geshida refused to go and collect medicinal herbs. Once they reach a hotbed for herbs, they start looking for their first medicinal herb, the Hurts Beyond Belief. While foraging, she notices deer tracks and decides to hunt it down for dinner. They end up tracking a deer down, but its eyes turn a scary red. The monster deer jumps to a massive height and lands past them to fight another giant spider monster. Malika excitedly draws her dagger and runs toward them to try and kill both of them. Thanks to mostly Dariel, they kill both the monsters and bring them back to the village. Geshida runs off, crying like a baby because his spotlight was stolen again. Days pass, and Dariel adjusts to the village life well. The only problem is Geshida's unwillingness to work with Dariel. One day, Dariel arrives at the office to see Invil stressed. He explains that an urgent quest about a highly dangerous Blaze Death Scythe monster in the village's woods has been issued. Since it is very powerful, hunting it is limited to sea rankers and above, but the village has none. Due to this, the quest has been handed over to the neighboring town's guild, which has already dispatched its adventurers to surround it. Ishida ended up seeing the quest when he was at the guild office and left quickly, making the guild master worry that he will try to hunt it down himself and interfere with the other guild's plans. Such an incident could cause conflict between the two guilds, and the guild master will be held responsible. Dariel volunteers to go and get Geshida back safely. Malika gives him medicinal supplies she made from the herbs they had collected before he leaves. Dariel makes his way to the area where the Blaze Death Scythe was spotted. He is surprised to see a large trail left by the monster and wonders where the other guild's adventurers are. He sees Geshida screaming and running toward him with the monster following him. Dariel holds his ground and prepares to fight the giant serpent, but it ignores him and continues following Geshida. Geshida tries to shoot it with an arrow, but the arrow merely bounces off its tough scales. Dariel attacks it from behind but lands too shallow of a wound. The monster tries whipping its tail at Dariel, and he tries to block it with his sword, causing it to break. Dariel takes one of the sharp pieces and uses both sting and hit abilities to throw the piece into the monster's mouth and blow apart its insides. It works, and the blaze death scythe monster perishes at his feet. After that, Dariel applies the antivenom that Malika gave to Geshida's bite wound and pours bloodstaunch herb over his other wounds to stop the bleeding. With that, they return to the village. The next day, Geshida comes to the house and greets Dariel as Big Bro, saying that he owes his life to him and wishes to work under him after healing from his injuries. Meanwhile, at the Demon King's palace, one of the four generals returns after being forced to flee a battle against a powerful hero's party. She blames her defeat on the new assistant of the four generals because he did not scout the enemy properly, and failed to report that a new spearman had joined the party. Flashbaza immediately fires him, making him the fourth or fifth assistant fired since Dariel's dismissal. One of the generals, Deroy, suggests reappointing Dariel, saying he always carried out his tasks perfectly, was skilled in strategy, and also looked after their health. Flashbaza, however, hates him so much that his blood boils and refuses to consider that option. 
One night, Dariel asks the mayor why the village has so many empty houses. The mayor explains that beyond the village, there is a mithril mine, a highly valuable metal with mysterious properties. Humans use it to make superior quality weapons with unparalleled performance, while demons use it to make magical equipment. This led to disputes between the humans and demons for control over the mine. Since Lux Village was a common stopping place in the mithril trade route, it flourished as a lodging town. Unfortunately, when the mayor was a kid, the demons took complete control over the mine, causing the town's main revenue source to get cut off. Since then, Lux Village has slowly been declining to its ultimate death. Dariel decides to sneak into the mithril mine the next day. Since he was the one in charge of the mine as a part of his duties as the assistant of the army generals, the workers there know him. He hopes that he can negotiate with at least one of them to get some mithril to bring back to Lux Village to help in its development. He puts an empty crate over his head and walks through the gate, finding it weird there is no security to hide from. He quickly realizes that there are no soldiers at the mine, wondering who has been put in charge of the mine since he was fired. He walks into the mine shaft, yelling for anyone there to show themselves. A group of small beings with wide faces and fluorescent facial features called knockers emerge from the darkness. They immediately recognize Dariel and excitedly greet him, and he waves back equally enthusiastically. They hug him and line up to receive pats from him individually, claiming that he is the best boss they had. They tell him that they have to supply four times as much mithril as before under Bashbaz's orders. They aren't treated with respect by the new management, and the soldiers that used to be deployed for their security have been withdrawn to cut costs. Their ranting is cut short when a group of demon soldiers enters the mine. Dariel quickly hides behind a large rock. The new commander yells at the knockers for not supplying enough mithril in the given time frame. Despite their begging, he threatens and orders them to have the material ready by the next day, or there will be consequences. Fed up, one of the knockers decides to rebel and hits the commander on his head. Infuriated, he orders the soldiers to kill them all. Knowing the knockers have no match against trained soldiers, Dariel interrupts the first magical spell by throwing a spade at the soldier. He then appears in front of them with a sword, wearing a mask made of cloth to hide his identity. He asks the demons to withdraw, saying he will not pursue them if they do so, but if they continue attacking, they will have to face him. The commander simply laughs at him and orders his soldiers to continue their attack. Some of the soldiers start casting spells, but Dariel knows they require the utmost concentration to cast them. As long as he can break their focus, it should be fine. However, one of the knockers tries to attack a soldier who has almost completed his ritual. Dariel thinks it is too late to save him, but the soldier kicks him back. Seeing this, Dariel realizes they have been trained as honorable soldiers, just like he was. He tries to appeal to their morals by urging them not to kill the knockers, as they are non-combatant civilians, and killing them would make them murderers not soldiers. It seems to work until the commander attacks Dariel and threatens the soldiers with attacking them, failing which, they will be burnt to ash. The soldiers chant rituals of the different elements. Dariel knows the duration of each element's ritual, allowing him to time his attacks so that he takes down the soldiers in ascending order of the ritual durations. The commander frantically casts a spell on him, but he easily blocks it with his sword and tackles the commander to the ground with his sword on his neck. Desperate to save his own life, the commander begs Dariel to spare him because he is a civilian. He explains that he had simply gotten along well with Lord Beshbaza at a ball after which the Lord entrusted him with managing the mine. The Honorable Dariel slashes his sword down, giving the commander a bad haircut, and tells him to go back and resign from his post. The commander instantly agrees and runs off, with the soldiers following him. The grateful knockers thank Dariel for freeing them from the commander and make him their boss. Dariel returns to the village and reports to the mayor that he has regained control over the mine. In return, he pleads with the mayor to ensure protection for the knockers. And so, the mithril mine returns under human control for the first time in decades. The knockers are allowed to remain there as guides since they are familiar with the entire mine's layout. With the re-emergence of mining, people pour into Lux Village, returning it to its previous state as a bustling, prosperous town. The Demon King's army continues to face problems due to severe mismanagement under Bashbaz's leadership and the loss of mithril supply is the final nail in the coffin. The Demon King has him dragged to the throne room to punish him for his blunders. He is mad that Bashbaza unreasonably increased the weekly quota for mithril four times to make a weapon that the king had repeatedly told him not to make. Due to this, the knockers were overworked and turned against the demons, something the king considers a grave mistake. He suggests bringing back Dariel to manage affairs like before 
praising Bashbaz's father for being smart enough to keep good soldiers like Daryl close. Hearing his name triggers Bashbaza a lot, causing him to throw a tantrum outside the courtroom. With the village up and bustling, Malika tries asking Daryl to marry her but is interrupted by a fight between Geshida and Fatibatan, the leader of Campbelltown's adventurers. After learning that Lux Village only has 2D rank adventurers, Fatibatan mocks their abilities by saying the Mithril Mine incident was just a fluke, telling them they will overtake all mine-related work. Daryl retorts by pointing out that killing the Blaze Deathside monster was the Campbelltown adventurer's quest but it was entirely taken care of by him and Geshida. Fitibitten is left speechless and is forced to drop his claim over the mine. The next day, Mr. Bisfrid, a diplomat from the Central Guild, meets with Dariel. He was sent to negotiate terms with the Knockers, but they are too weary to talk to anyone except Dariel. Dariel explains that they are being cautious because they were being exploited by the demon army and so can't trust outsiders. They think of Dariel as their savior from their demon oppressors, allowing them to trust him. This Frid requests Dariel to be an intermediary between the Knockers and the Guild during negotiations, and Dariel accepts. As soon as Dariel arrives at the mine and asks the Knockers to at least listen to what Mr. Bisfrid has to say, they immediately agree to cooperate. While leaving the mine, Dariel hears an announcement on behalf of the Demon King forgiving the Knockers for their betrayal and urges them to return and work for the demons. Dariel recognizes the voice and runs to look for it. Sure enough, the announcer is his former friend from the army, Rizit. Rizit builds a tall wall of rushing water between him and the adventurer, asking him to withdraw. Dariel tells him to calm down and reveals his identity. Realizing it's him, Rizit hugs his old friend and tells him how worried he's been for him. Dariel tells Rizit the truth, that he is actually a human. Although shocked, Rizit promises to keep it a secret. Rizit echoes everyone's sentiment when he shares how badly everything is turning out for the demons. Ever since the Demon King reprimanded Bashbaza, he's been even worse. Rizit was sent here by the Demon King to reconcile with the Knockers and resolve any grievances. Maintaining a good relationship with demi-humans like the Knockers is essential for the demon's success. He tries to convince Dariel to come back, saying one of the four generals, Lady Doroy, has been advocating for his return. However, Dariel declines the offer, saying he has a new life now. Rizit tries to use his magic to force Dariel to come with him, but Dariel uses his new skills with the aura to stop him. He has another plan. Dariel takes Rizit to Mr. Bisfrid and pitches his idea. He suggests that humans should use their monopoly on Mithril to sell some of it to the demons at a price four times higher than the market value. The two point out how Mithril is an essential resource for both humans and demons, so the demons will definitely come to try and win back the mine. This would result in another battle and countless deaths. Instead, the humans could supply a small portion of Mithril to avoid such a violent outcome. Rizit assures that the demons are in dire need of Mithril and will be willing to pay the high price. Fidibitan, who was on guard duty, protests against this idea and attacks Rizit with a dagger that Dariel blocks. Mr. Bisfrid orders Fatibitan to stop, pointing out that he has only been hired for security and escort, and accepts Dariel's idea. The next day, Mr. Bisfrid instructs Dariel to find the old mithril workshop and get it running again. However, when he gets there, Fatibitan has already arrived with Campbelltown blacksmiths and claimed it. The mayor explains that the mithril mine used to be guarded by Campbelltown, but now that Dariel has regained control over it, Fatibitan is more adamant about the workshop. An old man named Smith comes to the village as an expert mithril smith upon the Central Guild's request. He asks Dariel to let him work at the workshop but learns that the workshop is under the control of Campbelltown, and the higher rank adventurer won't listen to him. Smith tells Dariel to just lead him to the workshop and promises to show off his unfailing negotiation. But he just begs the arrogant Fatibitan to let him work there. Fatibitan largely dismisses him and only allows him to work in a corner of the workshop. But Smith is overjoyed to be working with Mithril again. The other smiths are having trouble forging the metal, so Smith demonstrates the proper way to do it by crafting a huge sword. Dariel is amazed at how easily his aura is absorbed into it and cuts through a giant tree without feeling any resistance. Fatibitan apologizes for looking down upon Smith earlier and begs him to come work at the workshop, but he refuses due to his initial rudeness. He also asks Dariel to return the broadsword to him as it is not a good match for him. Later, Smith shares that his true goal is to make the greatest weapon in his lifetime for Dariel to use with his perfect aura of all four types. During his time at the workshop, 
He was able to pickpocket some of the mithril and his assistant set up a small working space at the house. He brought an ethanol furnace, a type of magical equipment available on the black market. However, he cannot use it because it requires a magical source. Dariel calls Rizit to provide the required magic source, who only agrees to do it once because it's his friend Dariel's request. Later that day, Fatibitan tells Dariel to team up with Campbelltown and fight the Central Guild, claiming that they are keeping most of the profits from the mine for themselves. He promises that Campbelltown will treat Lux Village better if he agrees to form an alliance. Dariel declines, saying he can't team up with someone who's hurt so many people he cares about. Infuriated, Fatibitan throws his glove on the ground and makes Dariel pick it up before inviting him to the village square the next day. When he gets back home, Dariel learns that this was how men challenged each other to duel. The mayor explains the rules of a duel. The duel goes on until one of the participants surrenders or can no longer fight. The outcome of the duel will most probably be used to decide the ownership of the mine. If a person is killed in a duel, the killer isn't charged with the crime. Hence, people use duels as an opportunity to fulfill personal revenge. Worried for Dariel's life, everybody advises him to back out of the duel which would mean Campbelltown gaining control over the mine. Dariel insists that he will participate, and Smith teaches him to use a mithril weapon for the duel. The next morning arrives, and both opponents meet at the square. Fatibitan is armed with a shield and blade partly made out of mithril. Dariel draws out a seemingly simple and small pure mithril knife. While Fatibitan taunts him about his weapon, Dariel flings a boulder that Fatibitan only notices when it explodes near his face. Fatibitan runs forth to attack but Dariel forces him to stay back as he makes the blade of his knife extend. Fatibitan finds an opening and tries to make a move with his blade, but Dariel effectively blocks it with the knife. He follows it with a strike on Fatibitan's shield, causing the shield to split in two. Smith gives commentary in the background and explains that the knife he made is called Hermes' sword and is no ordinary weapon. He designed it so that the wielder's aura can change its shape, and since Dariel has a perfect aura, there are no limits to the forms the sword can take. Dariel slashes Fatibitan's blade to pieces, but one of his adventurers throws a mithril longsword at him. Dariel transforms his sword into a whip and shatters the longsword on Fatibitan's first attack, marking his swift victory. Fatibitan has taken way too many L's at this point and the duel is declared over. Malika is overjoyed and hugs Dariel while congratulating him. Later, Mr. Bisfrid from the Central Guild earnestly apologizes to Dariel for the incident and says that Campbelltown and its guild will be punished. Dariel asks if he can choose the punishment, requesting that the guild be made to repair the house's damage due to the duel. Recognizing his honor and talent, Bisfrid invites Dariel to join the central guild, which Malika overhears. Dariel says he will need some time to think about it. That night, while Dariel relaxes in the sauna, Malika enters and asks to talk to him. She says that since he will be going to the central guild, she wants to spend more time with him before he leaves. She encourages him to do well, saying that she knew this day would come since he is so talented. She thanks him for all the work he has done to make Lux Village a better place, and that she has never felt happier than when she was at his side. Dario looks at Malika's smile, and thinks that she always puts everyone else's happiness over her own. He tells her that he already decided not to take the Central Guild's offer, claiming he loves the village. Malika is so relieved on hearing this that she starts crying. Dariel holds her face to wipe her tears and kisses her, realizing that he now has one more reason to not leave Lux village. Over at the Demon King's palace, Bashbaza visits his father, Granbaza as he is practicing using magic again as a form of rehabilitation. He claims that a little exercise will help him get better quickly. They sit down for dinner, and Granbaza asks Beshbaza if he remembers what he said to him when he retired from his position as one of the four generals. Beshbaza recalls that he told him that Dariel was the greatest stroke of luck in his life and passing him on the Beshbaza was a way to pass the good fortune to him and celebrate his new position. Granbaza asks him how Dariel is doing and Bashbaza frantically assures him that he is doing well serving the generals. Knowing his son is lying, he punches him through the wall. He demands Bashbaza bring Dariel back, but Bashbaza refuses, saying he wishes to prove his worth on his own. The next day, Dariel and Malika come out of the same bedroom, and Dariel feels that her parents probably already know about what happened between them last night. He is on the edge for the entire morning, and then Invul invites him to his office for a chat. He says he and his wife are getting old, and it was time for the younger generation to take up responsibility. He believes that Dariel has greatly contributed to the village's growth, and he offers the title of mayor. Dariel accepts and requests permission from him to marry Malika. Once granted, he asks for Malika's hand in marriage, 
and she gladly accepts. This marks the beginning of a new chapter in Dariel's life. One year passes, and Dariel and Malika are happily married with a baby son Graham, named after Dariel's father figure, Granbaza. He opened up about his past with the demons to Malika and her family, and they accepted him regardless. He is a successful mayor under whom the mithril processing business flourishes in the village as it grows bigger and bigger. Smith passed away due to old age but spent his last days in the workshop following his passion for mithril smithing and inspiring everyone with his skills. One day, Gashida informs Dariel that the hero is coming to the village. Hero is the title awarded to the strongest adventurer in the Central Guild devoted to defeating the Demon King. Dariel recalls the hero being a scary, old bearded man who would kill demons mercilessly. Afraid that he will be recognized as the assistant to the demon army, Dariel prepares to greet the hero with his face covered. However, he is surprised to see the hero being a young, beautiful girl named Lady. She only recently earned the title after the old hero retired, and has come to the village to acquire the perfect mithril weapon to fight the demon king. Along with her are her two party members, a girl who specializes in using shields, and a spear user. Lady and her party receive lodging at the mayor's house, and in the morning after their arrival, Dariel greets Spearman and Shield Girl, asking if Lady has not woken up yet. They knock at her door, and Lady opens the door, still half asleep. When her comrades remind her that this is the mayor's house, she suddenly closes the door in their faces and gets ready in five seconds. At breakfast, she states that she has two objectives for coming to the village. The first is to get mithril weapons, and she wants to see them immediately. Dariel gives her a tour of the mithril workshop, claiming that it is the only one that exists in the world. Smith had passed on all his knowledge to the smiths working there before dying, and now they followed his techniques. Dariel shows a mithril sword to the hero's party as they have never seen it before and tells them to pass their aura through it. The shield girl takes up his offer first, and pouring aura into the sword makes her feel better than her boyfriend ever did. Lady is getting impatient and asks Dariel to hurry up and tell them about the orderly weapons. Dariel calls Sakai, Smith's apprentice, who is currently the best mithril smith. Sakai mistakes Spearman for the hero and starts flirting with him, but when he learns that the girl next to him is the hero, he starts touching her hands. Lady is embarrassed, but Dariel assures her that Sakai can find out the type of aura she commands just by touching someone's hands. She is impressed when he correctly judges that she has a slash type aura, and then she moves on to her second objective. She is seeking a fourth member for her party, a goal that she has been trying to complete by traveling to many regions. Just as she tells this to Dariel, Gashida enters the forge, and he tells Lady to leave it to her. The village holds a competition to decide the fourth member of the hero's party, with many signing up to participate. The method of selection is a head-to-head -head battle between the three party members and all the participants. The hero's party members use kitchen utensils as their weapons as handicaps, but all participants still lose. Suddenly, an arrow whistles past Lady's face. Geshida is the one who shot it from a distance, and he keeps shooting at her. Lady charges in the direction of the arrows, sensing that the attacker has good power but low accuracy. Gashida uses his aura to lift the arrows from the ground and attack her again, but she slashes them down. Gashida prepares for another round, but Lady activates an attack that would have killed him. Dariel recognizes her attack and is forced to intervene to save Gashida's life, and he throws an apple to disrupt Lady's attack. Gashida comes crying and apologizes to Dariel for disgracing the village, but Dariel praises him for his effort as the strongest adventurer in the village. Within a year, Gashida has leveled up from D rank to B rank. Lady refuses to believe that someone other than Dariel is the strongest person in the village, and she asks him to have a one-on-one -on -one bout with her. He refuses, saying that he is already retired as an adventurer, but Lady still attacks him to test him. Dariel blocks her attack and then outmaneuvers her using his shape-shifting weapon. They are evenly matched, and Lady gives it her all and slashes a mountain in order to hit Dariel. Lady acknowledges his strength, and to force him to show it, she ditches the wooden sword and draws her real sword as she prepares to use her most powerful attack, Sky Rend. Dariel has already seen this attack multiple times from the former hero and successfully counters it with his version. Their attacks cancel out, but Lady is shocked to see him using the same move as the former hero. She eagerly offers him the final position in her party, and her party members also request that Dariel join them, but he politely declines and goes back home. At night, Lady and her party visit him while he is feeding his son and once again ask him to join them. Dariel insists that he is committed to being with his family and watching his son grow. Lady asks him if he has any other reasons for not joining them, and he replies that everyone in the village relies on him, 
and he cannot leave them, even for joining the hero's party. Lady is frustrated and tells Dariel that he is wasting his potential by staying in the village, and she declares that she will not stop trying to recruit him. In his mind, he also doesn't wish to fight the demons who once were his family, like Rizit, Granbaza, and Lady Doroy, who was one of his close friends despite being his superior. Doroy always used to tell Dariel that the smiles of the children were what they were fighting to protect, and that is why he can never turn against the Demon King's army. Lady cannot believe that there is anything more important than defeating the Demon King and decides to stalk Dariel to figure him out. Throughout the next day, she watches him help out the villagers on their errands and aid those in trouble. Dariel first visits the forge, where he gives a counseling session to Sakai, whose mental health is crumbling under the stress of producing quality weapons for his customers. After that, he goes to the Guild Hall, where his father-in-law is cleaning the floor, but he hurts his back while doing it, so Dariel picks up his incomplete job. He does all kinds of things, from fixing people's fences to taking care of stray cats, and Lady understands that Dariel truly believes his highest purpose is to take care of his people. That night, she wishes to discuss something with him privately, and invites him to the waterfall. She asks him where he learned the Skyrim technique. He claims that he picked it up by copying her style, but she points out how it was different from hers and more similar to the previous hero, Alancel's. His technique was so refined that it was called Emperor's Skyrend, and Dariel never knew that it was such a big deal since Alancel used to spam that attack as soon as the fight began. When Dariel says he has no idea about this, Lady gets mad and points her sword at him. She once again tells him to join her, stating that it was the duty of those with aura abilities to stand up and fight against the Demon King. They argue over which side started the first attack against the other, with Dariel arguing that a human hero set out to kill the Demon King first, and the demons merely fought out of defense. Lady rejects this, pointing out that one of the demon generals, Bezitan, had needlessly killed Alancel's wife and son, which caused him to become a merciless monster and avenge his family's death. Despite all that, he never found his son's corpse. Dariel replies that he once fought against demon soldiers at the Mithril Mine, and they refused to kill non-combatants. He reasons that everyone from both sides fights for their loved ones, and neither is the evil side. Lady is moved by his strong values and strength and gives up on recruiting him. She claims that what she needs more than Mithril weapons and a fourth party member is a heart as strong and kind as his. She requests that he be her teacher to improve her skills further. Dariel accepts, considering it a chance to persuade the hero to stop the long war. One day, Rizid visits Dariel to act as a babysitter for Gran while Malika is out on an errand. He plays with Gran, and Dariel finds it surprising that his demon friend is so fond of kids. Rizid asks him about the hero's party, and Dariel informs him that they are going to camp up in the Lux village for some time, and there is no immediate threat of war. Speaking of that, Rizid informs his friend about his recent promotion to the position of Special Envoy, which has equal authority as the four great generals. Thanks to Dariel's help in securing mithril supplies for the demons, Rizid had this position made just for him. Dariel wonders why a new position was created, and Rizid explains that things have become inefficient since he was fired, and everyone has to take on more work. Their small talk is cut short by one of the demon generals, Lady Zeb, who materializes out of thin air, and expresses her surprise to see the special envoy working with an outcast. Both Rizid and Dariel are terrified of seeing her, and they know it is not going to end well. Zeb first punishes Rizit for hiding information about Dariel from the generals by making him a human chair. She enjoys sitting on his back, but he would have preferred his face to be her seat instead. Just then, Malika returns home from her errands, and she has no issues with the new guest and her strange fetishes. However, when Zeb starts insulting Dariel by calling him an ugly idiot, Malika snaps. She shoots a cork out of a wine bottle like a bullet, which barely misses Zeb's face and she trembles from fear like an old Nokia phone on vibrate mode. Zeb behaves like a polite guest and tells Dariel that she is not here to look for him but to investigate Rizit and his secret connections that allowed him to get Mithril. Rizit apologizes to Dariel for letting her in, but he knows there is no way he could have detected Zeb following him since she is a wind magic expert and can hide her presence completely. She is flattered and says that her power and charm will be increased by magic equipment made from Mithril. And for that, she commands Dariel to hand over all the mithril he has to her. He politely refuses her command, saying that there is already a trade relationship between humans and demons, and he does not plan to disrupt it. Zeb tries to threaten him, but she cannot utter a single word in front of Malika's death stare, and Dariel suggests that they should take it outside so that she can intimidate him freely. There, Zeb attacks Dariel without a warning, 
and he barely dodges her wind bullet. She claims that her words won't get through to him, and violence is the only way to show him his position. On top of that, she wants revenge against Dariel for sending his monstrous wife to threaten him. Dariel requests that they should talk it out, but Zeb refuses and takes to the sky, and he is forced to draw his weapon too. Zeb makes fun of him for using a weapon despite being a demon since she does not know that he is human. He jumps towards her before she can attack him and pretends to slash her. Zeb uses a wind barrier, but Dariel's slashing motion was just a feint, and he points his blade at her to end the battle instantly. Zeb tries to escape embarrassment by saying that she was not ready and asking for a rematch, and she flies even higher. There is no way she can beat Dariel, and after being defeated a few times, she decides to change her strategy. She flies again and declares that she will blow away the entire village and then gain control of all the mithril. Zeb launches a powerful geostorm, but Dariel counters it with his emperor's sky rend, and the geostorm is absorbed by his strong aura. Zeb is aghast at being defeated even after using her most powerful spell, and she falls down, unable to cope with her loss. Dariel jumps and catches her, and Rizit saves them from crashing into the ground with his water magic. Zeb then throws a tantrum and starts crying, and Dariel has no option but to console her by selling her some mithril in exchange for promising that she will keep him and this village a secret. Zeb also wants a mithril weapon like his Hermes sword, and Dariel takes her to the forge and asks Sakai to make a weapon for her that can use magic. However, he realizes that it is almost time for the hero's party to return from their visit to the neighboring town and it will be troublesome if they run into one of the four demon generals. Dariel runs to the village gate to stall them so that they don't run into Zeb, but before that, he asks Sakai to take as much of her time as he can. Dariel greets Lady and her party at the village gate and gives her his most charming smile to distract her from everything else. He sends her party members on quests and commands Lady to swing her sword one million times, hoping it will keep them busy for quite some time. In the meantime, Sakai has kept Zeb occupied and even sold a lot of stuff to the gullible demon. Despite Dariel's best efforts, the two girls meet each other in the sauna, and Lady recognizes Zeb as one of the demon generals. Luckily, Dariel was nearby, and he interrupted them before they could get violent. However, he gets slapped away for touching them inappropriately, and feels like he is facing a jury when they all sit for dinner. Zeb and Lady start bickering again, and Dariel realizes that he cannot hide his past any longer. He informs them that he is a human who was raised by demons, and the girls find it hard to believe. Lady understands his situation but still wants him to kick Zeb out since a demon has no place in a human village. On the other hand, Zeb refuses to acknowledge the girl as a hero. Malika slams a pot of stew on the table to intimidate them so that they don't disturb the peace of her house and tells them to duel it out to come to a mutual understanding. The girls have no problem with it, and Dariel volunteers to be the referee since he wants them to promise that they will not try to kill their opponent. He refuses to take sides in the duel and says that he does not want anyone to die. Lady is quick to accept his suggestion, but Zeb refuses to promise anything. Dariel tells her to say goodbye to Mithril in that case, and Malika refuses to give her food until she agrees. Both the girls agree to fight according to Dariel's rules in the morning. But the mind games start immediately. They finish their meal and then rush to the forge to get Sakai to make mithril weapons for them at night. When Dariel reaches the designated place for the duel in the morning, he finds that Sakai is so exhausted that he can only whine and complain. As Dariel rescues him from the two battle-hungry girls, he shames them for making him work like the children in Chinese sweatshops. The duel begins with Seb and Lady unleashing their full power using the mithril gear Sakai made for them. Lady covers herself in aura and Zeb manifests wings using her wind magic and positions herself in the sky. She shoots Lady with wind magic attacks, but she counters them using sky rend. The girls then move to close quarter combat, and Zeb blocks Lady's attack with her magic wings. They keep on fighting, and Malika arrives with popcorn and snacks to enjoy the show. She is surprised to see that Zeb and Lady are equally matched, and no one is able to overwhelm the other. Both land some good hits on their opponent, and finally, they go all out with their ultimate attacks. The collision creates strong winds, and the shield girl from the hero's party and Dariel erect barriers to protect themselves. The loud noise wakes up his son, Gran, who is attracted to the jugs of the two fighting girls. He leaps towards them as they are still facing each other, but just then, a large boulder loosened because of their previous attack starts falling towards him. Dariel protects Gran, and Lady and Zeb also rush to save them from the boulder. Zeb blows away the boulder using her wind magic, and Lady sees that even demons can be good and kind. 
Luckily, no one is hurt, and Gran can't stop laughing because he had too much fun just now. He thought that Zeb and Lady were playing with each other and wanted to join them. They have a good laugh about what just happened, finally come to a mutual understanding, and decide to stop fighting. The two former enemies hit it off as friends, and Dariel thinks that the duel could not have ended in a better way than this. He was an exception, but Lady and Zeb becoming friends proved that humans and demons could live together in harmony and his MLK dream of a society where everyone lives and peace could come true. Later that day, the spearman from Lady's party comes to Dariel's home, eager to introduce him to a great celebrity he found in the forest while completing his quest. Dariel is stunned and speechless to see the former hero Lancel, and now he is afraid that the balance between humans and demons will be in peril because of his hatred for the demons. Unaware of that, Zeb casually walks to the door and pokes fun at a Lancel. Dariel fears that if the previous hero learns about Zeb being a demon, she will surely meet her end, so he pulls her to the side and tells her that the old man at their doorstep is a Lancel, the strongest hero in history. Dariel tells her that a Lancel survived getting hit by Granbaza's strongest attack, and he is known as a reckless murder machine who does not have any emotions left. Just then, some kids come to get an autograph from the former hero, and while Dariel was worried that something terrible might happen, a Lancel behaves like a chill old grandpa. The kids rush to him, and the old hero plays and laughs with them, much to Dariel's surprise. After the kids have established that a Lancel is not dangerous, a long line of his fans assemble outside the house to do a meet and greet with their hero. Dariel invites him in after some time and offers him tea and snacks. He introduces Zeb as his acquaintance, but a Lancel is still behaving like earlier and eagerly shakes her hands. Zeb is confused by his actions, and she concludes that he is just a kind old man. But Dariel thinks that is only because he is mistaking her for a human. He tells her to get out of the village as soon as she can and warns her not to use magic because the old hero has the ability to sense even the slightest amount of magic. Zeb dismisses his words of wisdom because she is more interested in eating donuts than escaping the previous hero. Soon, Dariel introduces himself as the mayor of Lux Village and asks the reason for the previous hero to come to their humble establishment. Alancel tells Dariel that he heard about his successor, Lady, being here, so he decided to check up on her progress. Lady apologizes to her master since her quest to defeat the Demon King was taking much longer, but Alancel claims that the entire blame lies with him. He says that he was hasty when he sent her off to kill the Demon King earlier. Now that he has healed from his injuries, he wants to train her again, and Lady is happy to hear that. Dariel also thinks that it is good timing since Zeb can run away while Alancel is busy training his student. He wants to show him the training grounds, but the former hero stops him because he has been sensing a strange presence near them for quite some time. Dariel starts sweating as he wonders if Zeb's secret is out, but Alancel points to Gashida standing and waving outside the window. Dariel is relieved and then takes everyone to the training ground, where Gashida keeps staring at him like a fanboy, and he has to be reminded to pay attention to the two heroes sparring. Alancel tells Lady that he will teach her through actual battle practice and orders her to attack him whenever she pleases while he signs autographs for the villagers. Lady boosts her abilities with aura and rushes in to stab Alancel, but he dodges her attack even without looking at her. He keeps on avoiding her sharp attacks while signing autographs, and then suddenly holds her wooden sword and slams her on the floor by manipulating her momentum. Dariel thinks that the old man is just toying with Lady, but Alancel compliments her, saying that she has become much stronger than before. He asks her who is helping her train, and Lady gives credit for her improvement to Dariel, whom she believes is the second strongest human after Alancel. Dariel does not like where things are heading, and then Alancel takes out his foldable staff from his pocket and requests that he spar with him. He refuses, saying that he is already retired as an adventurer, and the villagers also agree that their mayor cannot hold a candle to the former hero. Geshida is the only one who hypes him up, and seeing him try so hard for his sake, Dariel decides to give it a try. He steps into the arena and faces Alancel, but just as he unleashes his strong aura and killing intent, Dariel feels like he is in mortal danger. He stalls him by saying that they should eat before fighting, and the previous hero falls for it. They have an outdoor picnic and enjoy delicious shrimp fried rice, and Alancel wants to meet the shrimp who fried the rice. He gets emotional as he remembers the last time he had a homemade lunch. Dariel remembers what Lady told him about demons killing Alancel's wife and son, and he can sympathize with the old man since he is a family guy too. Zeb was watching them from a distance, and she thinks that Alancel is nothing to be scared of. She has finished her snacks and starts walking towards the demon territory when a strong gust of wind blows away a piece of drying laundry. 
the absent-minded Zeb uses magic to fly and catches it, hoping that she may get extra snacks for doing this. However, all she gets is the attention of a Lancel, who senses her magic and gets up. He enters beast mode and turns into the merciless killer Dariel knows. He launches his staff towards Dariel's home, and it hits Zeb's clothing and traps her. As she hangs upside down, a Lancel comes to her and tries to kill her since she is a demon, but Dariel intervenes and blocks his attack. The hero tells him to get aside and let him kill the demon, and even though Dariel sees the shadow of death in the former hero, he refuses to let anyone die in his village. He has seen a Lancel in action before, but that time, he was always behind Granbaza, and this time, he had to fend for himself. Dariel asks a Lancel to listen to him, but he breaks a piece of the fencing and starts walking towards him. Dariel slashes him, but he jumps over him to attack Zeb. Dariel attacks him by elongating his weapon, but a Lancel blocks it and counterattacks with Skyrend. Dariel barely guards against his attack and is sent flying outside. He realizes that he cannot beat a Lancel, so he drags Zeb towards him to keep her safe. The old hero throws the piece of wood at him, and he blocks it by reinforcing a concrete slab with his aura. Just then, Lady and Geshida come running towards them, but Dariel tells them not to get involved. A Lancel walks towards him and says that he is impressed to find someone other than himself who can use all four types of aura. He claims that Destiny has brought them together and asks Dariel to become a hero and join him in the war against the Demon King. Dariel refuses to join him, and a Lancel says that he will destroy him along with the demon in that case. Both of them use the Emperor's Sky, and their aura dragons collide mid-air, but a Lancel overwhelms Dariel's attack and hits him. Luckily, Dariel is able to guard with his aura shield at the last moment, but he still takes too much damage. Lady stands before a Lancel and begs him to stop, but she is overwhelmed by his menacing aura. A Lancel says that he met many people who did not join the fight because they were too afraid of death. But Dariel seems different. He asks him the reason he was trying so hard to protect a demon, and Dariel replies that he does not want anyone to be hurt, no matter what their race is. The old hero calls him delusional as he explains that humans and demons have been at a perpetual war, and there is no way to stop it. He thinks that the dream of world peace is only a noble delusion, but Dariel replies that his motivation is not something so grand, and he just wants to protect what is dear to him. He tells the former hero that he can feel the pain when others get hurt, and he does not want to see anyone suffer. He knows that Alansa lost his family because of demons, and he understands his pain since he also has a loving family, and the thought of losing them scares him to death. Dariel adds that right now, Zeb is also a precious friend to him, and he would be deeply sad if he lost her. That is why he does not want anyone on either side to suffer from the same thing. Alancel asks him why he is so fixated on the demon race, and he is stunned to learn that Dariel was raised by demons. On the other hand, Granbaza pays the Demon King a visit and finds him looking like a fearsome dragon. The Demon King tells him that people can only see him as a reflection of their current status, and the more powerful he seems to a person, the stronger the person is. He claims that Granbaza has healed from his injuries and grown stronger if he sees him as a fearsome monster. Granbaza says that he is here to make a request from the Demon King to fire his son Bashbaza from the post of the Demon General immediately, as he is not fit for it. The Demon King asks the reason behind this request, and he replies that in addition to his multiple failures, Bashbaza has been acting up like a shut-in and has not left his room for over a year. He was not even answering the messages sent to him. Granbaza thinks that the order of the demon army is crumbling, and only Lady Doroy is shouldering the burden, but even she cannot do it forever. Granbaza does not care if his son does not get a job anywhere after this bad track record and wants to fire him for the betterment of the demon army. But the demon king claims that it was not the real reason. He knows that Granbaza is furious at his son for firing Dariel, and this is how he wants to punish him. The Demon King accuses his former general of caring more for his adopted assistant than he did for his own son. Granbaza boards the nostalgia bus as he recalls a rainy day from his youth. In the midst of the battlefield, his friend Bezitan, the water general, gave him a message with his dying breath. Bezitan informed Granbaza that he had hidden a trump card to defeat the hero in the eastern forest and requested that he take custody of the secret weapon. Granbaza went to the forest and found a bush created using illusion magic. He dispelled the illusion and found a child inside a hollow cavity in a tree trunk. Granbaza was always a softy when it came to kids, and he picked the boy up, promising to protect him. He thought that the boy was like an angel and named him Dariel. Granbaza returns to the present and tells the Demon King that both Dariel and Bashbaza are his sons. Hearing his response, the Demon King tells him the location of his adopted son. 
Granbaza thanks him, but before he goes to see Dariel, the Demon King warns him that it may not be easy to bring him back since he is well settled now. He also tells the old general that Dariel can use all four types of auras like the previous hero, and he finally realizes what Bezidin meant when he called him a secret weapon. Back at Lux Village, Alancel asks Dariel to elaborate on what he said about being raised by demons. Dariel tells him that the Water General Bezidin found him and entrusted him to the Fire General Granbaza, who raised him. Alancel recalls that he killed Bezidin in his vengeful fury but never found the corpse of his son, and something strikes his mind. He asks Dariel his age, and as he learns that he is 33 years old, everything starts making sense to him. Alancel hugs Dariel, telling him with a trembling voice that he is his son, whom he presumed dead for all these years. Everyone watching them is in disbelief, and Dariel is having the hardest time believing the sudden news. He asks Alancel what makes him say that he is his son, and he replies that 33 years ago, his wife was killed by Bezetan, and he presumed his missing son to be dead as well. On top of that, the four aura attributes are passed from parents to children, and there was only one way Dariel could have them. Alancel can bet his life on the fact that Dariel is his son, but Dariel finds it tough processing the sudden revelation that the strongest hero in history is his father. Just then, Alancel notices someone watching them, and he sends a sky wren towards a cliff, where it is blocked by Granbaza, who has just arrived to take back his adopted son. Dariel is surprised to see Granbaza as he flies towards them. He lands before him and starts walking towards Dariel, saying that he has grown much stronger since the last time. Dariel is about to have a touching reunion with his adoptive father, but Alancel draws his weapon to face him. Seeing both his dads aiming for each other's lives, Dariel steps in between and asks them to stop. He requests that Alancel at least hear out Granbaza since he was the one who raised him in his stead. Alancel calms down, and Granbaza tells Dariel that he learned the truth just a little while ago, even though he had a hunch about him being a human for a long time. Granbaza knew that he was raising a human kid, but he could not bear to let him go away. Dariel thanks him for giving him everything in his life and for not letting him feel like an orphan. Granbaza replies that he is the one who is truly grateful to him. He wanted to be someone Dariel would respect, and that is why he pushed himself and became the strongest of the demon generals. He hugs Dariel, saying that he is his pride and joy, and Alancel feels jealous. He claims that Granbaza stole his time with his son, and now he will never get those precious years back. Alancel is filled with rage, since he was supposed to grow stronger because of his time with Dariel, and instead of that, he gains strength because of his rage and bitterness. Granbaza asks him to let out his rage on him because he must pay for Bezitin's hideous crimes against his family. He even asks Dariel to try and find happiness with his father. Alancel and Granbaza get ready to fight, hoping to end their journey, and Dariel wants to somehow stop them. Luckily, Malika arrives at the scene right before the two men clash and drenches them in water to cool them down. She tells them to stop fighting immediately because they would not want to display their hatred in front of their grandson. Malika introduces them to Gran and says that they are his grandpas, and Dariel finally finds the way to end their battle for good. He asks Granbaza to give up on dying to atone for his friend's crimes, and he asks Alancel to relive his parenthood as a grandfather. Alancel holds his grandson in his arms, and Dariel thanks his wife for handling the conflict, and she hugs him happily, sending him to the hospital again. Meanwhile, Bushbaza has finally come out of his man cave, and he learns that his dad has asked the Demon King to fire him for being incompetent. Because of his foolishness, the Demon Army as well as the Social Order were crumbling, and the servant says that if Dariel were here, things could still be solved. Bashbaza tries to ignore him and orders the chef to prepare food for him, but the chef says that his bills are long due, and he may be soon fired from his job, so he cannot add anything else to his tab. The chef adds that when Dariel was here, he used to take care that all bills were paid on time, and now they have to be more careful about freeloaders. Hearing Dariel's name hurts Bashbaza's fragile ego even more, and he unleashes his magic to explode the fancy demon restaurant. He walks out of the burning building, cursing everyone for favoring Dariel and insulting him. He declares that he will make everyone who insulted him suffer, and since Dariel was the one who insulted him the most, he will take everything away from him. Using the book in his hand, Bashbaza awakens a forbidden power in his right eye, and he says that just exiling Dariel was a mistake, and he plans to correct his mistake by killing him. Back at Lux Village, Granbaza and Alancel have forgotten about their past, and they happily play with Gran while Dariel gets his injuries dressed. The two old men now fight for the attention of their grandson, and Alancel gets jealous since his grandson is named after a demon. 
Gran gets irritated by the two old men and starts crying because he needs his diaper to be changed. Just then, Rizik calls Dariel, and Gran wants to talk to him too. This makes his grandpas jealous, and Granbaza threatens to burn Rizit to a crisp for being too close to his grandson without his approval. Later, everyone has dinner together, and Dariel finds that his three father figures are drinking together, with Inbul sandwiched between the two strongest men of this era. They start drinking, but Inbul's beer mug is crushed as he cheers a Lancel and Granbaza. They get drunk and get silly quickly, and then start talking about Dariel. Granbaza tells the anecdotes of Dariel's childhood, and Alancel thanks his former enemy for raising his son into a fine man. They shake hands, forgetting everything that happened between them before. After everyone retires for the night, Dariel helps Malika with the dishes, but since he is still hurting from his injuries, she reapplies medicine to his wounds. Malika says that if Alancel and Granbaza were not his dads, she would have punched them earlier for being so reckless, and then coddles Dariel for being able to handle everything so well. She leaves, and Dariel tries to eat his pudding, but then Zeb enters the room. She asks him how he has been holding up, and Dariel is worried about her because she went through some scary experiences during the day. However, the only thing that remained in her mind was when Dariel protected her and said that she was precious to him. Zeb thought that it was Dariel's way to confess his love to her, and she tells him that she will think about becoming his second wife. Dariel tries to clear up the confusion, but she flies away, giggling to herself since she was just teasing him. The next morning, everyone gathers at breakfast, and Lady asks Alancel to train her again today. Dariel wants to know if she is still planning to fight after learning that not all demons are bad. She is still sure that defeating the Demon King is her mission, and Dariel asks what even is the hero's problem with the Demon King. Alancel explains that all heroes are taught that the Demon King is the source of all the suffering in the world who must be eliminated to bring peace to everyone. However, that was what the textbook said, and Alancel knows that the Demon King possesses the greatest strength and wisdom out of all beings in this world. The Center Guild wants to slay him and steal his knowledge and power to evolve humans into something better. It was said that the Demon King was the one who bestowed the gift of magic onto demons, and by killing him, humans may get their hands on magic too. Granbaza confirms that there is a legend like that even on his side, but no one can confirm it. Dariel suggests that they can ask the Demon King directly, and Lady is shocked to hear that the original Demon King is still alive and ruling. She realizes that he might be a creature who transcends time, and defeating him may be an impossible task. Seeing her worried, Alancel suggests she give up the unreasonable fight, but Lady replies that she wants to grow stronger and learn the truth about the Demon God so that she can come to an answer. Suddenly, Gashida knocks at the door and informs Dariel that monsters have attacked the Mithril Mine and they need to protect it. Dariel tells him to prepare a squad to join them later and asks Zeb to teleport them to the mine. Zeb flies Dariel and others to the location of the mine, but she is forced to stop as the heat radiating from an infernal dragon stings her skin. Everyone is shocked to see the dragon, and Granbaza says that they can no longer approach it from the sky. They reach the gates of the mine on foot, and Dariel learns from the injured soldiers that the knockers are still trapped inside. He is worried about them and leaves to rescue them, while the rest of his group decides to take down the dragon in the meantime. Dariel runs to the mine, wishing that the knockers are safe, and Alancel joins him, claiming that he wants to look after his son more than he wants to fight the dragon. Outside, Granbaza has some suspicions about the dragon's origin, but Lady cannot wait for reinforcements and rushes in to defeat it. She asks Zeb to assist them, and she creates footholds for them using magic. Sesha attacks the dragon using his spear, but it has no effect, and then Lady uses Skyrend on it. Even her attack fails to make a scratch on the dragon, and Zeb saves them from the dragon's counterattack by flying them to safety. The dragon uses his fire breath at them, and the shield girl jumps in to protect her party. Her armor is burned to a crisp immediately, and Granbaza steps in to save them. He uses his magic to take control of the dragon's fire and challenges it to a fight, addressing it by the name of the magical flame beast, Salamander. Meanwhile, Dariel and Alancel have reached the mine, where the knockers are still alive, but they are on the other side of a heap of rubble. Alancel tries to remove the rubble using his abilities, but then the infernal dragon pops up right next to them. Dariel says that they must deal with it before the rescue, and the father and son use their emperor's sky in tandem to knock the dragon out of the sky. Everyone is astonished as the dragon falls to the ground, and then Dariel stands in front of it without an ounce of fear. He stretches his hand towards the dragon in an attempt to calm it down, 
but the dragon's behavior suddenly changes, and as it is about to reach Dariel, it turns away and flies off to its nest. Everyone is happy that they won, but Lady claims to have felt something like hatred radiating from the dragon. Dariel did not feel any hatred, but he felt something nostalgic. Granbaza has a hunch, and he decides to return to the Demon King's castle with Zeb to investigate and Dariel's group gets busy rescuing the Knockers. The Knockers are overjoyed at being rescued and hail Dariel as their savior, but he feels guilty that he was not able to protect everything. Alancel could tell how he was feeling, and he advised his son not to take all the responsibilities on himself. He suggests Dariel take the help of others when necessary, but then a man reports that his friend is missing. He was last seen in the mines, and Dariel goes to look for him along with the Knockers and leaves the surface to his dad. On the other hand, Granbaza has returned to his mansion, and he finds Bushbaza with his awakened demon eye and a tattoo on his face. He asks his son if he entered the Chamber of Secrets, and when Bushbaza feigns ignorance, Granbaza punches the wall to give him a warning. Zeb doesn't even know about the Room of Secrets, and Bashbaza tells her that it was a secret chamber hidden inside the Demon King's castle. It contained the most powerful types of magic spells, called hexes. Hexes were like Russian roulette and gave the user great power, but came along with a great risk, so they were sealed away. Granbaza says that there is one hex that allows a demon to control a magical beast among them, and he claims to have sensed Bashbaza's will from the salamander at the mine. He asks his son if it was his doing, and Bashbaza does not deny it. Granbaza is done with his bullshit attitude, and he complains that even though he has a talent for magic, he lets it go to waste. Unlike Dariel, who makes the best use of everything, those words hit exactly where it hurts, and Bashbaza recalls an incident from his childhood that convinced him that his father favored Dariel over him. His jealousy increases, and he lashes out at his father, accusing him of siding with the humans, as he had seen him through the eyes of the salamander. Granbaza does not care about his accusations and tells him that using the spirit synchronization hex to control monsters weakens one's mind and body. He warns Bashbaza that soon he will become mentally unfirm and will be unable to tell himself apart from other people. Granbaza is deemed unfit to be a demon general since he used a forbidden hex and put the lives of many innocent demons and humans in danger. He attacks him with his fire magic. Bashbaza summons the salamander once again, and the monster absorbs the fire attack. He declares that he is going to kill the previous hero and the current hero in one raid, and that will be more than enough to prove his capabilities to everyone. Bashbaza rides the salamander and flies away, even when his father and Zeb try to talk sense to him. Meanwhile, Dariel and the Knockers are looking for the missing people inside the mine, but the mine starts to rumble, and they decide to run away. Just then, a loud voice tells them to stop, and Dariel turns around to find a giant stone face protruding from the walls of the mine who wants to talk to Dariel who denies knowing anyone by this name and runs away while carrying the knockers with him. The stone face uses its power to block their way and then introduces itself as the magical earth beast, Gigantamatia. He blames Dariel for the recent attack of the magical fire beast Salamander, who burned his body even though they were old friends. Dariel apologizes for whatever the dragon did to him, but he does not believe that it was his fault. Gigantamatia claims that Salamander was reflecting the rage of the caster who summoned it, and that rage was directed towards Dariel. However, Gigantamatia warns him of a huge danger that is coming towards Lux village and asks him to show him a piece of mithril, which he claims to be a part of his body. Dariel takes out his Hermes sword, and Gigantamatia is mesmerized and flattered to see how beautifully it was crafted. He bestows his powers upon the mithril weapon and removes some restrictions from its structure to make it even more powerful. Dariel has many questions, but Gigantamatia refuses to tell him anything else and then vanishes, turning the mind normal. Meanwhile, the Knockers have found the missing person, and as they go to rescue him, Dariel gets a call from Granbaza, who reveals that it was Bashbaza who summoned the dragon and sent it here. Granbaza tells him about Bashbaza using a forbidden hex to control one of the four elementary magic beasts to kill the heroes. Dariel realizes that the nostalgic feeling he got from Salamander was what he used to feel from Bashbaza, and he realizes that he was after him. Now he understands that this is the danger approaching Lux village, as Bashbaza wants to destroy everything that is precious to Dariel. Dariel reaches home and tells his father-in-law to evacuate all the villagers while he goes to deal with his adoptive brother. Malika already had his gear ready, and she put their wedding ring on his finger as a gesture to tell him that she is always with him. She pushes him ahead, telling him to complete his business quickly, and then return to her safely. Dariel stands at the gate of the Lux village with the adventurers and ladies party, waiting for the dragon to show up. 
he comes to them soon, and on top of it is Bashbaza. He greets Dariel casually and then complains about it being too dark to see his face and uses a wide range of destructive spells as a light bulb. Alancel knows that spell well from his fights with Granbaza, and he wonders if Bashbaza's strength rivals his father's. He wants to defeat the Fire General, but Dariel just wants to talk it out peacefully. Bashbaza notices his wedding ring and starts clapping as he congratulates him. Dariel doesn't understand anything, and Bashbaza further confuses him with his incoherent ramblings about how people with greater responsibilities are damaged more when they fall. He declares that he will kill Dariel's wife first and then burn down his village before hunting him down. Dariel remembers Granbaza's request to look after his idiot son, and he really wanted to fulfill that request. But now there is no way he can do that. He releases his aura and transforms his Hermes sword into a whip, determined to stop Bashbaza no matter what. In response, the demon general commands the salamander to fly towards the village and turn it to ash. Dariel uses his whip to catch salamander's leg. But Bashbaza is confident that he cannot do anything more than that with just a puny weapon. However, Dariel gets some help from his magic using friends and casts the dragon on the ground since Seb and Granbaza have returned to the village to back him up. Dariel uses Sky Rend at Bashbaza, who counters it with his fire attack. They are locked in combat, and Dariel draws him away as he asks his friends to take care of the magical beast. They are separated from others, and there, Dariel apologizes to Bashbaza, thinking that he was upset because of the Mithril Mine incident. He wants to make it right by opening official negotiations, but learns that Bashbaza didn't even know that he was behind the incident. Dariel is on his wit's end and asks him why he resents him so much if it is not because of Mithril, and Bashbaza declares that his mission is not so small. He wants to stop the human demon war by killing the heroes and destroying humanity, so that he is hailed as the greatest demon general in history. However, he feels the need to take care of Dariel before that, as he failed to get rid of him properly the last time. Bashbaza activates his magic and launches fireballs at Dariel, who slashes them away with his sword, but a big fire blast overpowers him despite his block and sends him crashing. Bashbaza launches a flurry of fireballs at him and pushes Dariel through the forest. He uses a powerful underground explosion to launch him into the air, and then blows him away with another powerful spell. Dariel crashes into the nearby hills, but he has not taken much damage. Bashbaza comes before him to explain his gloriously evil plan. He first spent an entire year trying to find the spirit synchronization hex in the Room of Secrets, and then traveled around the world to find Salamander and subdue him. Instead of being intimidated, Dariel is impressed by his hard work and dedication. He praises Bashbaza, calling him the most talented and diligent magic user he has ever seen, but adds that he is a bit aloof about his surroundings. Bashbaza feels his words condescending and uses powerful fire magic at him as he tells him to shut up. Dariel remembers his happy life in the village and refuses to take the beating sitting down. He unleashes the Emperor's sky at Bashbaza and blows him away, but is still worried about him. Suddenly, a powerful gust of wind blows away all the smoke from the previous explosion, and Dariel finds Bashbaza radiating a weird energy. In his rage, he starts transforming, with horns sprouting from his head and a thick, muscular tail coming out of his back. Bashbaza says that this is his ultimate trump card that he was hiding to kill the heroes, and he never thought he would use it so early. Dariel is still in awe and terror as he sees the transformed Bashbaza, and he wonders what is going to happen next. At the same time, the rest of the fights are facing Salamander. The shield user from Lady's Party casts multiple barriers around the dragon so that it cannot fly and attack them from the sky. Salamander roars to terrify her, but Geshida shoots a flurry of arrows to force it to close its mouth. Seeing everyone give their all, Alancel feels strange that he can finally fight without his maddening rage. And on top of that, he is standing side by side with his greatest enemy. Granbaza also finds the idea of a united human demon front appealing, and then the two old men join the battle. They dodge the dragon's fire breath and jump towards it, where Alancel makes it dizzy using his lightning-fast footwork and then hits it with an attack called an adamantine thunderbolt. The attack causes the salamander to lose balance and get distracted, and using that opening, Granbaza uses a powerful spell and summons a hellfire pillar from underneath its feet. The attack manages to defeat the salamander, even though it is also fire-type. Everyone is amazed by the old general's power, but then they notice a giant fireball and a bright pillar of aura at another site. Back at Dariel's location, he has realized that Bashbaza's demonic appearance was because of the hex. Bashbaza attacks him with a tail, and Dariel blocks his attack, and they both jump up. 
Bash Baza calls Dariel an incompetent fool who cannot use magic, and the fact that he keeps on smiling even after that infuriates him. Dariel blocks his fire punch, but Bash Baza whips him away using his tail. He tells the demon general that he has no talent while he has everything. But Bash Baza is not in the mood to listen to reason. He uses his dad's signature hellfire magic, and Dariel realizes he must use all his strength to stop it. He charges his Hermes blade with aura, and it turns into a very long blade of light. Dariel strikes Bashbaza with it, and a giant explosion shakes the entire area. But the Hellfire Ball has not vanished yet, and instead of being defeated, the Demon General has transformed even further. Dariel speculates that his previous attack hastened the process of the Hex, and now Bashbaza seems like a magical beast himself. He lunges at Dariel with great speed and smashes him into the ground before tossing him onto the nearby hill. Bashbaza attacks him there too, and as Dariel holds him back, he requests that he stop causing Granbaza any more anguish. That infuriates him even further, and then suddenly, Dariel finds himself inside Bashbaza's memories. In his memories, he is still a kid who is enjoying the grand welcome his father gets. The little Bashbaza wants to become a great demon like his father, and Granbaza tells him that he will have to become the general of the Transcendental Tempest for that. Dariel realizes that this must be because of the hex magic that was getting unstable and pulling others into it. The memories continue, and Dariel finds himself in the room of the ten-year-old Bashbaza. Granbaza had just returned from one of his expeditions, and as the boy went out to welcome his father, he found him with Dariel. Granbaza told his son to rely on the boy like an elder brother and listen to what he said. Bashbaza was hurt because he realized that while he patiently waited for his father to come home, he spent time with his second son. He decided to work hard to join the demon army and be with his father, but that did not sit well with his mom, who felt that her family was not paying any attention to her. Bashbaza still made his way up the demon army and became one of the four generals, but his father retired and left him in Dariel's care again. He was devastated that his father did not want him to stay by his side, and after seeing all this, Dariel finally understood his feelings. He realizes that Bashbaza was always alone and craving affection, and everyone failed to notice it. Dariel pities him, but Bashbaza reads his thoughts and backs away, telling him to stop feeling sorry for him. He sees this as his way to reach Bashbaza and attacks him as he informs him that Granbaza was always worried about him. Dariel even compares him to a Lancel, who thought that his son was taken away from him by demons when it was just a case of misunderstanding. None of that works on Bashbaza, but then Dariel's mithril glove starts to glow, and his memories reach the demon general. Bashbaza sees the young Dariel, who was always anxious since he was not Granbaza's real family, and he could not even use magic. The least he could do for his adoptive father was to not cause any trouble and keep smiling to give him peace of mind. All of it changed when he first met Bashbaza. After that meeting, Dariel started to feel as if he really was his elder brother and Granbaza's son, and he finally found a family. Dariel rushes to Bashbaza in the dream world and tells him that it is his turn to provide him with a purpose and support and his transformation starts to crumble apart. Bashbaza recalls how he denied becoming friends with Dariel back then, and he thinks that if he had been more accepting, things would have been different between them. He returns to his normal form, and Dariel once again reaches out a hand of friendship towards him. Bashbaza reaches out too, but just as he is about to touch him, the Hex acts up, and he feels a numbing pain in his head. Salamander had freed itself from his control, and now he absorbs the energy of the Hellfire Sphere to regain its strength. The dragon is fully charged and releases a violent outburst of energy, and Bashbaza can feel everything. He immediately flies towards the Salamander, and Dariel follows him. Bashbaza lands atop the dragon and uses another hex to fuse his body with that of the monster. Granbaza warns him not to do it, as the body fusion hex will give him temporary control of the dragon, but soon he will be absorbed into it. Bashbaza flies away with the dragon, and Dariel arrives at the scene moments later. The demon general has finally come to his senses, and he plans to sacrifice himself to correct all the mistakes he has made so far, but he is also glad that he got to talk with Dariel openly. Suddenly, he finds himself getting ejected out of the dragon and notices Granbaza using a hex to dominate Salamander. Using a hex takes a toll on the old demon, and as the dragon tries to free itself from his control, Dariel comes there with Zeb's help and uses his most powerful emperor's sky rend on it to defeat it. Zeb keeps herself and Dariel afloat in one air pocket, and in the other, Granbaza hugs Bashbaza, who feels like he is a kid again. Back at his home, the news of Dariel's victory has reached Malika who prepares her best dishes to serve her husband. 
Just as she gets the faintest idea of him being outside, she rushes towards him, destroying their door. Dariel is pleasantly surprised to see her accelerate towards him this fast, and he decides to accept her supersonic hug even at the cost of a few broken bones. Surprisingly, she gently embraces him, and Dariel drops his guard just a few seconds before her tightness almost kills him. After everything has been resolved in the village, Bashbaza goes to the Demon King to accept the punishment for all his crimes. The Demon King's appearance is now different as compared to what he saw last time, and this proves that Bashbaza has grown stronger and matured. The Demon King hears his pleas for a just punishment, and he uses an ancient spell to open the gates of hell under the Demon General's feet. Menacing and sinister spirits start peeking out of the gate, and the Demon King tells Bashbaza that they are the former members of the four generals who committed grave sins like him, and they were sentenced to an eternity in hell. He offers Bashbaza the choice between starting his life as a Demon General, and mending his mistakes or suffering in hell. Bashbaza thanks him for his mercy, but then says that his crimes do not deserve to be forgiven, so he must choose to go to hell. He believes that fiddling with hexes and trying to subdue the magical fire beast Salamander was a crime that cannot be ignored, and hell is the only suitable punishment for him. One of the spirits from hell grabs onto his leg, but the Demon King uses his power to send it back where it belongs. He finds Bashbaza's response boring as he was planning to make him happy by giving him false hope and then enjoying the look of despair on his face as he unexpectedly fell to hell. His response made him change his mind, and he sentenced Bashbaza to exile, just like he had once exiled Dariel. Bashbaza returns from the king's chambers to find his father and his pet bird waiting for him. They go straight to Dariel's home, where everyone is enjoying a party. Dariel is relieved to hear that things went well with the demon king, and just as he is about to introduce his son to Bashbaza, Lady interrupts them. She reminds Bashbaza that his actions have caused irreparable damage to the Mithril Mine and the people there. Granbaza wants to take responsibility for his son's actions, but he stops him and apologizes for everything he has done. Just then, Gran wakes up, and Dariel introduces him to Bashbaza. Gran wants to be held by the new guest, and he speaks his first words as he calls him Big Brother Bashbaza. Those words remind him of Dariel's memories, and Bashbaza finally realizes how it felt to get accepted into someone's family after having no place to go to for such a long time. He is overcome with remorse and decides to atone for his crimes, and everyone finally accepts that he has changed for good. Malika says that Gran spoke his first words today, and it calls for a grand celebration. Dariel knows the exact thing to make the celebrations better, and he commissions Geshida to paint their family picture with his speed painting skills. Dariel believes that they will look back at the picture and remember the day Grand spoke his first words and their family became complete. They party to celebrate the happy day. And the next morning, Bashbaza leaves on his journey to atone for his sins. He wants to help the people and knockers he has harmed with his thoughtless actions, then travel around the world and become more like his elder brother. Dariel wishes him all the best, and then Malika sends him off with enough food for the month. With peace finally back in their village and their family, Dariel and Malika continue their blissful lives. Watch this video on the screen next. See you guys later.